BIPOC. Um, it's the Black Indigenous People of Color Initiative. Um, we know that there's not enough history resources that have been documented around the state that are related to our minority populations. And so they have this initiative. Um, it's an extra part of the grant process. But because of this project fits into that, we can do the project and not have to have the 25% minimum cash match we normally have. So that's good because we don't have to come ask you for money and we don't have much money in our budget. So those are the kind I like. <laughs> I thought you might. I thought you might. So, um, so what the project is, and um, we've been working on this for quite a while. Um, as you're aware, there probably there's a very large Japanese American section at the Rocky Ford Cemetery. Um, and if you haven't seen it, you really ought to go see it. It's a beautiful, beautiful cemetery, beautiful section. Um, we worked with the city of Rocky Ford. And um, we had submitted an application or preliminary to the state of Colorado, and the cemetery is eligible for the National Register. Um, we have not done a National Register nomination in the 17 years that we've had the Preservation Board. We've done local ones, but this is um, something a much higher level. And it is eligible um, as a what we call a rural design um, cemetery, which was a movement. Um, and also for its association with the settlement patterns of our early pioneers, Japanese Americans, and Hispanic community. So um, we have, um, are going to do a National Register nomination. The team for that will be um, Dr. Kathy Corbett. Um, she was an architectural historian. She worked on the first project. Um, she has written many National Register nominations and sat on the state review board for those. Jane Daniels, who you're aware of, she's helping us with the Masonic Lodge and myself. Um, one of these takes about three, three to 350 hours to research and write one of these. So um, we're applying for a grant for that. And then the other part of the project to do the National Register nomination is we're going to do something called, we're basing it on um, a program, a project at Fort Logan National Cemetery in Danburg. Um, with a program they're doing with the University of Danburg called More Than a Headstone Untold Stories. Um, if you've ever gone to the cemeteries and you notice there's all these beautiful old headstones and early pioneer ones and we really don't know anything about them, we don't relate to them, and the people have kind of forgotten, especially if they don't have family. So this program um, that they develop tells those non-traditional stories through that. So working with a local um, group, um, advisors, um, Del Paqueta and Sandy Kanishi Dell, we will select um, a group of people, probably five to seven to start with, in the Japanese section and tell their stories and kind of use that as a way to interpret the cemetery and tell those stories about the Japanese history because that has been very much forgotten how long they've been here and what their contributions are. So um, the grant is going in. Um, if you approve our application, it will go in. Um, I've been working on it for about six weeks. It will go in end of this week. Um, Rocky Ford have provided us with a letter of support and have signed off as the owners of the property for us to do this. So um, what I would like to request is that one, that we be able to apply for this grant as a certified local government, um, the preservation board, and um, two, that you will sign off as the elected official. Uh, we'll leave the W-9 filled in. And then I think there's a letter of support also. Is there any questions? And I don't know if you, um, the Certified Local Government Program, um, if you're familiar with that. Um, it is so Terrell County applied. We've had preservation boards from 2004 to 2010. It's a program that's run by History Colorado through the National Park Service. It's a partnership program. Every state has it. And it says that a government entity, a city or a county, has made a commitment to historic preservation, to documenting our history, and to um, telling those stories. Um, so there's certain things we have to do every year. Um, so that's what a CLT is. It'd be real cool if you do one of those where you pull up and your radio station keys into the, and it tells you all about it in your car as you. Interesting, we did that with the Home on the Range project on the did. podcast, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, and maybe we can do this. And what we look at with this is this is kind of a way to start this. We would like to maybe be able to keep you know, doing this. Um, these histories will go to History Colorado, the Rocky Ford Library and Museum, um, the Japanese, Japanese American Resource Center of Colorado. 
and the Lahana Library has um, agreed to, they will house them also in their genealogy local history department. And Heather would like to put them up onto their new website so that you can start building some of that history there as well. I'd like, to, I'd like to thank you, Becky, for what you're doing. Yes. It is a wonderful thing, and those people, people don't understand how many there are down here in southeastern Colorado. And, that, and, that's and it's wonderful. Too. Yeah. Well, and you know, I think the other thing that's interesting is um, we're aware, and I know the commissioners have, and the preservation board, we've supported um, the work at Amachi. Um, but we're seeing more and more relationships between um, John Hopper has sent a wonderful letter of support for this. Um, one of the stories we can tell here that can't be torn at any of the torn at any of the other internment centers is we had a large resident Japanese population here that had been here, and we had a governor that said we're not going to allow our Japanese American to be put into camp into these internment centers, and we're the only state that had that. So we have the dichotomy of this of the internment center, local residents. And some of them had family members from other states that were sent to Amachi and they would go visit them. Mm -hmm. And so there's a relationship between the Japanese that were here and those were, that were at Amachi and that story needs to be told. So this is something that will also work with what they're doing and hopefully Amachi will soon become a part of the National Park. Cool, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I have a letter prepared. Excellent. Here's the, the number you guys say I have a, a special one. Okay. We'll and um, this would be the application to grant signature page that has to be signed by the whomever. Sorry, Jim. Um, do you have a blue pen? Okay, good. She's retraining us here. Yeah. Um, I have to upload that, but then the wet signature also has to be sent in with the grant. On the top line. Right. Yep. And this is this so you know where uh, SHF allows us to send in a grant um, and they'll review it and give us feedback before the final goes in. So it's in there right now. The budget for we're looking at about a forty-five thousand dollar budget. So this is a good opportunity for us to mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'll send it. Yeah, it's going to be nice on that side. Okay, yeah. And uh, but I do need to take the original to one page. Yeah. Because I have to have them. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> you can send me the rest of them. Okay, I'll be happy to do that. Okay. Did you All right. Thanks, Thank you very much. Did you ask me a question? No.